Welcome to the second part of our Highline backup tests. I have to warn you, now it's getting more complex. In these tests, we wanted to see how far you fall in the unlikely case of a mainline failure. Also, we measured the forces on the anchor points and the forces that would act on your body. However, as we were scared of the high impacts, we did not conduct the test with people anymore, but with a weight. As a weight, we took 28 ratchets with an overall weight of 46 kilos. Unfortunately, it was a bit less than the body weight of an average person, but we did a comparison with real person. More about that later. We conducted these tests in different scenarios to find out how important it is to have an intermittent connection between the main line and the backup. Additionally, we used two different sorts of backup webbings. On one hand, the static half marathon, and on the other hand, the super dynamic pink tube. Let's now have a look at the falling distances. When I talk about the distances of the backup fall, I mean the vertical distance between the anchor point height and the lowest point that the leash rings reach. This without taking into consideration that there is still a leash and a person hanging below the line. So actually you should add another approximate two meters. In this table, you can now see the distance of the backup fall. Those results have come out by using a 46 kilo weight. If a heavier person would fall, the numbers would be slightly higher. On the bottom, you can see the results with one intermittent connection in the middle of the line. On the top, the results without such a connection. As you can see, the distance of the backup fall is about 40 to 50% higher if you are not using an intermittent connection. Therefore, Especially on low high lines, it is highly recommended to use at least one intermittent connection. Also be aware that a bigger falling distance also leads to a bigger angle alpha. If there is any rock or other object close to the line, the backup webbing might scratch on it and take damage. On low high lines, it is best to pair the main line with a static backup line. However, using a static backup line will increase the forces on the system and the body which leads us to the next topic. If you do have an intermittent connection between the main line and the backup, the forces on the body are low. Be aware that we've used the dynamic pink tube as a main line and that the results will be higher if you use a main line with a lower stretch rate. To make the results more realistic for a human fall scenario, we calculated the gravity forces that are acting on the weight. With an intermittent connection, there are about 2.5 g acting on the body, which is equal to a fall factor 0.3 in climbing. This is quite soft. If you have no intermittent connection and a dynamic pink tube as a backup, the g forces are already much higher and go up to 3.7. This is comparable to a fall factor of 0.7, which is already quite a harsh climbing fall, but still okay for the body. However, if you use a static half marathon as a backup and have no intermittent connection, you end up at 6.3 g. This is a really hard fall in which it is not unlikely that injuries occur. So we definitely recommend to not use a static backup without an intermittent connection. So now let's have a look at the impact forces on the backup. Here again, we have to claim that we've used a weight of only 46 kilos and heavier people will reach higher forces. When using the pink tube as a backup, the forces were always low. There was actually not even a big difference between the forces with or without an intermittent connection. The low force on the far fall was probably due to the really big angle at the anchor point. The forces become higher when using only a static backup without an intermittent connection. With our small weight of 46 kilos, we've reached an impact on the anchor of 4.5 kilonewton. Let's sum it up. An intermittent connection leads to much smaller falling distances, much lower forces on the body and slightly smaller forces on the anchor points. Therefore, we strongly recommend using an intermittent connection on your Highline setups. Now we've conducted one last test. We've compared a backup length with an additional 2.4 meters and an additional 5 meters. We've only done the test without connection and with the half marathon backup. The impact forces on the anchor points were more or less the same. 
However, it is questionable if in this scenario our sampling rate of 40 Hz was good enough or if the forces would actually be higher. The falling distance increased by about 4 meters with the longer backup and the impact on the body just became huge. The measured 8.5 g is definitely extremely unhealthy and it is not unlikely that this force would break your back. So please, simply do not use an unnecessary long and static backup.